Hello, it's 4pm. Well, it's 4pm where I am. It's actually 11am where our guest today is. Uh, this is the Edge Player Weekly live show, and I'm very happy to be joined by Astrid Rosmarin, all the way from Montreal. Uh, Astrid heads up community at uh, Evolve PR, and has joined us today to talk to us about communities and games. Astrid, how are you? How are you? Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we very much appreciate it. Uh, so I thought, yeah, we'd just kick off if you uh, want to give a little bit of a background into into what you do, how long you've been doing it. Uh, just introduce yourself to, to everyone here in the chat. So, uh, yeah, my name is Astrid. I work at Evolve PR, which is a PR agency, but also we do trailers and community and all kinds of research and basically everything related to marketing for video games, very specifically. Um, Evolve is like 15 years old, give or take. Um, and I've been here almost three years. And uh, yep, so before that, I worked at a game studio that worked on Warhammer games, which nice. everyone in the UK <laughs> is very familiar yeah. with Warhammer. Um, and then before that, I worked at a place called Execution Labs, where we accelerated, incubated, independent game studios. And and um, and then before that, I did other things. So basically, I've been in the games industry for around a decade and kind of floated around the ecosystem mm -hmm. of promoting biz dev, all of that kind of biz side stuff. Nice. Uh, very interesting. So a wealth of experience. So everyone here who is listening, make sure you pay close attention because Astrid knows exactly what she's talking about very experienced um so i just wanted to firstly ask you about you say obviously you've got a lot of experience working in lots of different studios and games like what kind of differences do you find in in managing communities between like the large studios and the big games to to smaller maybe indies and, and smaller titles i think actually what that it's that word that you just said managing so for smaller titles and smaller studios very often you're actively building. And when you're on a bigger game or a famous IP or a big studio, it's much more management because the fans are there from day one, basically from, from the moment of announcement and maybe even before. So really it comes down to what your strategies are and what kind of policies you have in place based on your situation in that context if that makes sense i don't know if that makes yeah sense. that does make sense and in terms of obviously you, you work from kind of outside of the studio helping do you kind of would you go in and help set that strategy or would the game studio come to you and be like this is what we want to do can you help us implement it kind of how would it work from from that perspective or does it vary kind of from from studio to studio studio is different that's why we all love working in games right um Honestly, it's it's interesting because we'll have some clients that we work with where they just say, everything community, deal with it. And so we'll build the strategy. We'll, we'll even like request specific content to be put in the game so it can be used in for community initiatives. We'll run the social accounts, the Discord server, the TikTok, whatever it is nowadays. Um, and then we have other clients where they just, they have their own community team and they really just need a second pair of eyes or someone to bounce ideas off of, or to like look into something very specifically. You know, we have, we have some who just straight up when TikTok became popular, they, they went, should we have a channel? Do you want to run the channel for us? You know, like all this kind of stuff, because it's, it's a ton of work every single social channel and community area it's like exponential growth in terms of how much work you have to put into it yeah that's what i was going to ask you when you were saying about tiktok and discord obviously you've been doing this for for 10 years now and obviously that it's going to have changed a lot from when you started doing it to what it is now do you think it is now easier mm -hmm. or harder to to build and manage a community with so many different options and so many different platforms than we we had 10 years ago yeah, I mean, like the original game communities were were essentially forums, right? Mm. If we're talking about online communities, anyway, or the 
very beginnings of packs and and events like that land parties like that those are the old community initiatives essentially nowadays i think it's it's more of a, a choice problem in that most studios don't have capacity to have forums their own conferences attend all the other conferences have twitter and facebook and instagram and linkedin for recruitment and and TikTok, and then Vine, you know, whatever else comes out and becomes popular. And so it's about choosing the best locations for your communities to live in a kind of healthy way. So, cool. and how would you go about defining that? I assume that's something you, you would help with because it must, as you say, it must be really difficult because you've got so many options to choose from. And it's not for the most studios, it's not going to be sustainable to cover every single base. Because I guess, and I'm guessing the you you want to do a few things well rather than a lot of things not that great yeah um so how how would you go about choosing the right channel for for the studio does it dictate on like the genre or kind of the personality of the studio what what have you found is the best way to do that yeah there's definitely so part of it for sure is you want to go where your audience or your target audience already is, Mm -hmm. Um, especially if it's a really specific genre or a niche kind of of gameplay or like the visual novel community lives in very specific spaces and it's not the same as the first person shooter communities. Sometimes they overlap a little bit, like Twitter is where everybody comes in together from mostly from english speaking western areas Mm -hmm. but it's it's like one of those places where a little bit of everybody is um but then they all kind of fracture out into their own locations so it comes down to for sure researching online sleuthing (laughs) just talking to people and figuring out where to go and then the other part is what your own skill sets are especially if you're a really small indie type of team and there's a really good chance you don't have a community person who's dedicated full time then then play to the skills that are on the team if your artist loves posting to instagram all the time then see if they're willing to run the company instagram account Mm. things like that and and sometimes you can divide up the labor a little bit easier that way cool that's good to know and i guess Obviously, you've worked on different ends of the scale. Like, if someone came to you, like, and literally starting from nothing, which a lot of studios will be doing, and that feels like it's quite a daunting task to start a community from nothing. We haven't got a lot. What What would your advice be? What can you essentially do if you, if you're starting from kind of day dot and you have nothing? What What would your advice and plan be? I guess you will be able to do get, do a plan, but what would your advice be for someone who's who's starting with nothing? Yeah, a plan. But the thing is with the plans, always, always, always remember that they change, right? I've honestly, very honestly, I've been working with game developers for a really long time, it feels like. And I'm pretty sure no one ever has told me their launch window. And in my head, I always add six months. And then eventually one day the developer will come back and say, oh yeah, we're moving the launch probably to out of Q3 into Q Q1. And it's like, yeah, there's your six months, yeah. right? Like it's, <laughs> it just happens. And so the key to plans is having it be somewhat timeline agnostic and more just based around conceptually your goals and and how you want to achieve those goals. And then to answer the actual question you asked, I I personally just think throw up an account on Twitter. It's so much faster than a lot of the visual asset-based platforms like Instagram or TikTok or YouTube. Um, If you're super passionate about video making, I think YouTube is really good possibility but you have to really turn out content for that and so i i like to tell people just to go on twitter start with an account tweet about everything anything and everything that's relevant to your community my example that i give to everybody all the time is if you are a space game 
tweet about NASA, tweet about the Mars missions. There's all this. We worked with a company that has a like a physics bridge building game, mm-hmm. and around the same time, there was this news in San Francisco about how the Golden Gate Bridge they had done some construction, and so it whistles and it was really quite loud. It's like tweet about that. It's, it's a bridge. It's pop culture kind of news. It's why not? It's all relevant. <laughs> cool, and we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier but um obviously there is a there is a big difference between growing a community and then managing a community kind of what do you see of like the differences in approach to that and what are the the challenges to to both things because i neither are easy uh, i would imagine so kind of what are the the challenges for both both of those sides of the coin yeah they definitely have their own own particular challenges i would say for growing a community the hardest thing is just getting eyeballs onto your accounts your brand whatever it is in in general the strategies that work best are not standalone and so in in asteroid brain i i always like to weave together these all the different promotional methods that exist for us so you have social media and community, which kind of goes beyond social media, but most people focus on social media. But then you have events, which is another kind of community building. And then you have like physical and digital at this point. But then you also have PR and leveraging media sites and magazines and things like that. And then you also have content creators and not just video game content creators but thematically related creators as well in some universe you might have ads available to you if you have funding for that um you have stunts like go skydiving with a flag with your game name like there's that's a very expensive version of it but there's there's a million different options out there and really to me the biggest thing is uh, here's the box, the normal box is Twitter and Facebook and, and pitching to PC Gamer or whoever. And then there's everything outside of the box and just trying to push out beyond that. Cool. And I just want to finish touching on something which feels like it's really important, um, but must be quite scary to do and, and bring up like disaster planning around communities and, and PR. like. When, when does that happen? Do, 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 yeah, do, do you do disaster planning before it happens to think of it, this is everything that could go wrong or is it, does it have, to, it, because of the nature of it, does it have to be quite reactionary? How would, how would you approach that? So there's three answers to that. One oh. is that it's super important as soon as you start working on a game is to start identifying potential issues. A lot of companies you know, or consultants or whoever We'll do a SWAT and, you know, drill down into these things. If there's a playable game, that's like the easiest. And you just play through the game and you see if there's problematic issues in the game itself or talking points, whatever. So like definitely always vet the content and what you're doing and try and and see if things can change ahead of time or prepare for those specific issues. Um, but then in general, it really depends how experienced you are. For me personally, I, because I have experience, I I don't need to have a full scale disaster plan ready to go for everybody. It's more like, I mean, I'm sorry to say, but we see the exact same crises every year. Right. And so it's like, oh, I've seen this one before. Yeah. You kind of know generally how to react to it. That's, that's fair enough. Uh, Astrid, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really, really appreciate your time. Uh, I think you might be the first international guest we've had. Oh, no, we had Kelly, who was, was abroad as well. But uh, you're definitely the furthest away uh, that we've had all the way over in uh, Canada. So thank you very much yeah. for joining us. We really appreciate it. Lots of uh, great insights there into the world of community and PR. Um, we'll drop in the chat uh, where people can find you online. Um, and yeah, thank you again for, for joining us. It's, it's been a real pleasure. And thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw it to the pre-recorded segment now, which is Adam checking out uh, Roblox. Uh, so stick around for that. And in about 
10 or 12 minutes, I'll be back with Dan and we'll be going through the latest news stories of the week. See you soon. Hey, and welcome to another Etch Play video. My name is Adam Burt and I'm checking out Roblox today. Uh, this is Roblox. If you're not aware of what Roblox is, you've come to the right video because I'm going to tell you all about Roblox. Uh, Roblox is not really a game in the traditional sense. It's uh, more of a platform and uh, it's a little bit low fidelity, you might say, a little bit blocky. Oh, oh straight, straight in the lava. Um, <laughs> it's a platform essentially that allows people to create uh, their own games. Uh, 3D games, uh, all sorts of games really, all sorts of genres. We're going to check out a few of the most popular games on Roblox as part of this video. Uh, this is uh, Death Run, which is uh, prominently featured on the homepage, or at least it was when I recorded um, this video for you. And all you've got to do here is survive, it's platforming basically, and you collect these little gems and things along the way. Um, Roblox is pretty big business. If you've not heard of it, it's um, not quite at Fortnite levels or, or Minecraft levels, but it's it's up there. It is a uh, extremely popular platform, especially among the younger generation. So if you have children or you know younger people, maybe you've got nephews or nieces, uh, there's a good chance they might be Roblox fans. Uh, and it's a little bit inscrutable, I guess. It's, uh, I'm not going to claim to know everything about Roblox in this video. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of aspects to it that I still find baffling. I'm definitely not a, not a pro. I've uh, not really familiarized myself with the creation tools at all, although a lot of people have, and it's not just necessarily uh, you know young people either. There are definitely established game developers using Roblox as a platform for quick ideation, for prototypes, but also because they think it's fun. I think it's a fun platform to, to play with, obviously has a lot of the kind of physics and stuff built into it, so you don't need to do everything yourself. Um, there are even actually studios uh, based around creating games in Roblox, uh, so the creators of Adopt Me are actually uh, a full-time studio. Adopt Me is a popular Roblox title, and um, yeah, they can sustain themselves basically just by making things in Roblox. Uh, so I just completed that. Uh, I died, so I didn't get the maximum points available, but I did reach the end, so I got some XP and some coins. Um, and yeah, I mean the aesthetic is always the same. You're not if you're expecting like a you know a better looking level. Obviously, there's some artistic merit to certain levels and certain games, but they all have this same style. So, so that was Death Run, and let's check out something else, shall we? What else have we got in here? Blox Royale. So this gives you a bit of a taste of the kind of Bloxymon. That's like a Pokemon ripoff, for lack of a better word. Let's play some, uh, play some football or some soccer, as they might call it in this. Um, so yeah, quite a. I know it doesn't look like much. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but it's quite a powerful little engine, really, under under the under the hood here, which is enabling people to create things uh, of vastly different genres um, and different kind of objectives you know here we've got a team based game recreating some some football mechanics maybe not with the animation level of like a FIFA um, or even a Pro Evolution Soccer for that matter um, but definitely uh, impressive that someone could make this right it's impressive you could just make this in the game itself um, let's see if we can let's see if we can score a goal Look at that for a slide tackle. Boom. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on. Yes. It's a goal. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the Xbox uh, version of this. I'm actually playing on Series X here. Uh, but it's available for basically every platform, including mobile. Um, I actually think that's maybe one of the most confusing things about it. Like, playing this Xbox version has really highlighted to me that there are some things which are definitely a bit easier to control on the uh, on the phone side of things, or on a, on a PC, obviously. You've got a lot more buttons, you've got the, the mouse control for, for selecting things. Some of the menus are a little bit difficult to navigate. Come back. Ah!
Go on. Go for it. Have a shot. He's walking it in. Yeah. And, and the celebration the celebrations are the best bit of this particular little Roblox title. Uh, I mentioned that some established game devs are using this platform. Uh, a game dev that I really respect, uh, Terry Kavanagh, creator of Dicey Dungeons. Uh, a little while ago now, a few weeks ago, maybe a month. Uh, had an article in, in Vice, in Waypoint, which was uh, about his journey with Roblox and learning to love Roblox and making things in Roblox after, you know, being a more traditional game dev. Dicey Dungeons is a fantastic game, I love that game a lot. Let's see, I mean, I'm, my team's winning 4-0 and we've got less than 30 seconds to go, so uh, I think we might have this in the bag. Bit greedy, I mean, I was wide open. I did say pass, but maybe they couldn't figure out the pass button. Let's be generous. Um, uh, one of the other things about Roblox, I guess, is it's a social space. Obviously, all these other people here, they're not AI, they're other players in the world. Um, so I think for a lot of uh, a lot of the audience, whether they're young children or otherwise, it's really about staying connected, really about you know staying in touch with your friends and hanging out. Hooray! Oh yeah, I get a trophy. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. Uh, Roblox is also free. So if you're interested in any of this, if you want to download it and give it a go, you can do. Let's check out uh, Gorilla. Very popular popular little Roblox title this one. He's even made himself a little intro screen. And how to play Gorilla. You run away from the Gorilla, collect the keys if you can, and if you have traps you can drop them to slow the Gorilla down. Looks like there's a game in progress so we just have to wait here in the lobby for a bit and just run around. Do a little bit of crouch walking. Let's climb this tree. We've got nothing better to do while we wait. Oop. Yeah. Is that as hard as we can go? Looks like it might be. <laughs> oh, there's, there's someone up there. Okay, it must be possible to get higher. Let's, uh... <sighs> I must climb this tree. I now no longer care about the gorilla game. I only care about climbing the tree. Uh... Come on. Yes! Yeah! I made it! How's it going, Grace? <laughs> we made it. Oh! Oh, no, now you <laughs> go even higher. Let's go to the roof. Okay, I can't go over there. But this is pretty high up. I'm happy with that. Right, Gorilla, the game is starting. Uh, you see this? So this is even a cutscene, like a little introductory cutscene. That's pretty cool. Uh, so that, escape the gorilla. Everyone's going to try and hide somewhere. Let's go and hide in here. Everyone seems to be running this way. Let's 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 stick together. Oh yeah, I like this. Let's hide in here. It's a good idea. He'll never find us. He's been unleashed. Drop some traps there, people have. I just think I've still got mine. I'm not sure where to put it. They've put some in the doorway here. Which I feel like kind of lets the gorilla know that we're in here. <laughs> it's like, hey, where could they be? Maybe in this building with all the traps outside. <laughs> um, maybe if we stay hidden behind these boxes, though, maybe he won't even see us. Maybe he'll look in and he won't think to come 
Look. Everyone stays really quiet. What's that? That guy's a, a dog with a cat on his back. Or a dog with another dog on his back. Stay hidden. Where are you going? We can give away our position. This is tense. This is like as tense as a game of DayZ or PUBG. This guy looks pretty cool. Not that guy. The guy with the, the guy with the glasses. Oh, they're coming back. They must must be coming. Everyone hide. There he is. He's wearing a wig. No, don't. Okay, he knows we're here. Everyone run. Oh, he's got me. He's definitely going to get me. Run, 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 run. Oh, no. Oh. Last gorilla. Well, there you have it. Those are three of the top games on Roblox at the minute. And uh, yeah, interesting little platform, doing huge numbers. And uh, I'm going to throw back to the studio. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam Burt. See you again soon. Bye. Hello and welcome back. Uh, you were just seeing Adam check out Roblox, which can only mean you are on the Etch Play weekly live show. Uh, we just had a great interview with Astrid Rosmarin from uh, Evolve PR, all about games communities. If you were late to the party, don't worry. We'll upload that to our YouTube channel uh, later tonight or tomorrow morning. So if you missed it, make sure you head there and check it out. But right now, we're going to talk about some news, and I am joined by Dan Thomas. Dan, how are you? I can't hear you. I don't know whether you've muted yourself or turned your mic off. I hope it's not something I did, because Adam's going to tell me off if it is. Do, 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 do. Hold in music. Nothing's happening here. Do, 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 do. Is that any better? That's better. There we go. Dan, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, that's the usual caliber of production we get. Yeah. My microphone just failed on us there. Uh, uh, but no, I'm very good, and I very much enjoyed Astrid's uh, conversation. Some really great insights and nuggets there. So thank you to her. Absolutely. Shall we dive into some news? Uh, yeah, do, should we? It's been a been a t tough week in the world of games news, hasn't it? It has. We'll uh, let's pull out some good news uh, to start with. We'll start with a good news story. Uh, so first up, we have there's been some awards uh, recently. So GDC has been running, uh, and the IGF, uh, the Independent Games Festival, has also been running. And a number of awards were handed out at both of those events. And the big winners were um, Umarangi Generation and Hades, uh, which won. Umarangi Generation won the... I'm going to say this wrong as well. I, I always get the difficult word to say. I think it's the, the Seamus McNally Grand Prize. So that was the big prize at the Independent Games Festival. And Hades uh, won Game of the Year, which is much easier to say, at, uh, at GDC. Uh, I know you're a Hades fan. Uh, Dan, have you played Umarangi Generation or just, uh, just uh, no Hades from oh, that one? Sorry, what was, the, what was the name of the game and what award did it win? <laughs> Play it back. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've not, I've not, I've, I've heard of um, Umarangi Generation, uh, and it does look very cool, and I've heard very good things about it. One of those kind of like original concept games, um, and uh, yeah, I can see you've got the, uh, the the B roll playing now shows you kind of how different it is. Uh, mm. look, looks very cool. Um, yeah, we we've raved about Hades though, so good to good to see something else getting some recognition. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, good. Hades is, seems to be the game that just keeps on winning awards. It seems every time there's an awards event coming around Hades is winning which just is a testament to uh testament to the team over there that, that made it um you know it's and a small team as well um you know they've, they've done a phenomenal job so it's great to uh great to see them doing so well it's uh, just run through some of the other winners uh across those awards so Gen Genesis Noir which we uh have checked out on the Edge Play live show before um that won both excellence in audio and excellence in visual art so Looks great. Sounds great. That's what you want from a video game. Well done to them. Uh, Blaze Ball, which I believe we've also checked out. We, we're checking out all the award winners. If you want to win an award, 
Get us to check out your game on the H Play Live show, and you are guaranteed to win an award. So hit us up, and, and we'll uh, give you your money back. We'll, yeah, we'll get you that award. Uh, we're uh, we're the secret magic uh, ticket there. Uh, so yeah, Blaze Ball uh, took home the New Ovo Award, um, which they must be very proud of because um, you win that award by making the jurors uh, think most differently about games as a medium. Um, so that's that's a really solid one to win. Uh, best debut went to Phasmophobia, um, which was by Kinetic Games. Uh, Genshin Impact was best mobile game. Uh, we've got a good article on games marketing campaigns about Genshin Impact um, and what what they did with the marketing um, around that little little plug. Um, so go check out games mark, mark game marketing campaigns .com. after the live show. Don't go now, but go afterwards. Uh, what else did we have? Uh, best technology was won by Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, I know we've got some Flight Simulator fans in the team and some of our uh, friends at the, the studios we work with, I know are big fans of that game. Um, and the console games uh, didn't want to be left out. Uh, so the Innovation Award went to Dreams by Media Molecule, which Dan, I know you've been checking out Dreams recently. You must be happy to see that win award. You, you're a fan yes, of the game? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, very much so. It's, it's conceptually similar to uh, what we were just watching with Roblox, but obviously this is a console title and um, yeah, some really, really, really great pieces that have come out of Dreams. So big fan of that. Nice. Uh, carrying on Naughty Dogs, The Last of Us Part 2, which wins a lot of awards. Uh, that won Best Narrative, um, which is yeah, probably not a surprise to, to many people. A lot of people love, love that game and love the story of the game. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima by Sucker Punch uh, won the best visual art. Um, again, I know in, in the company we've got a lot of fans of Ghost of Tsushima. I know Miles, uh, fan fan of the show, a uh, friend of the show. I hope he's a fan of the show. He better be. Uh, he's a friend of the show at least. Uh, as long as he's a fan. If he's not, he's no longer a friend. Uh, but he really likes that game uh, and it does look stunning. So, so no surprise there. And they also won the Audience Award as well. Uh, so lots of winners, all very deserving games. And yeah, congratulations to all the teams that, that make those games. And everyone who was nominated as well. Just just because they didn't win the award doesn't mean they're not good games. It's uh, a fantastic achievement to, to be nominated. But it's it's great to, to have these occasions to celebrate how well everyone's doing and the amazing uh, titles that have been coming out. Uh, so next up, let's see if I can get that B-roll transition in smoothly. Of course we can. So we have uh, the Splitgate uh, developer. I don't know whether it's 1047 games. I feel like it's 1047 games. That rolls off the tongue a little bit uh, better. They have... 1047? Oh, it might be 1047. It might be 147, but it's probably not that one. Uh, they, they have raised uh, $10 million in their latest round of funding, uh, which is always great when you raise money in funding, especially when it's $10 million. That's definitely not to uh, be sneezed at. Uh, but they have had to uh, delay the launch of um, Splitgate uh, to August, which is not too far away. It's, it's basically August next week. Oh, well, it, it definitely is August next week, not basically. It definitely is. Um, and that's because two uh, million beta plays put stress on the server. It just can not quite hold up, so they're just spending a bit of time to make sure that it uh, it will. And this round of funding has come at a great time because they, uh, they have said uh, that that investment is going to be used to increase the server capacity and the stability uh, of the free-to-play shooter. So obviously that's why you would generate so many players when it, you know, you can see from the B-roll, it looks a fun fun game to play, free-to-play, so very low barrier to entry to, to get in there. Um, and also they'll be using the funds to uh, add to the development team. So um, yep, it's always great to get funding. When you get funding, it's often an indicator that you you know you've got something there uh you've got a good game uh, on your hands so yeah we'll find out in a couple of weeks uh when that comes out uh if everyone enjoys it as much as clearly uh, all the beta players it, have been it, i think it looks great i hadn't really seen much about this uh until i saw it was coming up on the news so i, I checked that out it's basically halo meets portal which mm. uh two of everybody's favorite things so yeah i think that looks like a great game and uh yeah congratulations to them for that investment and to AWS or Azure, whoever it is that's offering the cloud infrastructure that they're going to be throwing that investment straight straight at. Definitely. Um, and we have a very sad piece of news uh, to kind of end this, this week on. Um, unfortunately, uh, Ian Richardson, who is an industry veteran, uh, sadly passed away very unexpectedly uh, this week at the age of 53. Uh, he'd spent 30 years in, in the industry with senior roles at places like Gremlin, Ocean, uh, Europress and Rage. But for the last six years, um, he has been working with our friends over at Sumo Digital uh, in a business development director role. And as we've reported a lot of times on the show, Sumo has grown 
massively over the, the last six years of which uh, Ian was a, a very big part of um, and he was uh, an ambassador for, for special effects, one of the charities which uh, which is close to our hearts as well and, r and raise a lot of money for them. So we just wanted to acknowledge Ian and um, send our thoughts to all of his uh, family and friends at this, this very difficult time. And yes, yeah, it's, it's a huge loss to the industry and just we wanted to pay our respects and, and thanks to Ian for everything that he's done over his 30 years in the industry. He'll definitely be, uh, be missing a, a big hole is left in, in the industry. Um, so yeah, very sad news to end, uh, but to just bring the spirits, uh, back up to, to finish, Dan, do you want to just, uh, mention Autistica play? I, I know you're ambassador for Autistica and there's some stuff going on there over, over the weekend that if you wanted to, uh, just talk about. Yes, absolutely. So this weekend is, uh, international, this weekend celebrates international friendship day, uh, which is just a, you know, it's a social media trend celebrating, uh, friendships and. Autistica Play kind of are leveraging this to uh, draw, put a spotlight on kind of the impact of digital friendships and games friendships that are uh, yeah, enabled through through video games and interactive entertainment and kind of the, the importance and impact that can have on people with autism. Uh, it's absolutely key and so, much, so many of their friendships are enabled through kind of the medium. Uh, so in, Autistica kind of doing a bit of a fundraising drive throughout International Friendship Day weekend uh, and so you should definitely go and uh, hunt down some uh, some streamers who'll be doing charity streams and things like that um, drop some uh, drop drop some donations uh, and yeah it's just a just a really good thing to uh, to, to celebrate um, so yeah we'll, we'll drop a link to some more details of that into the chat and um, yeah go, get on there and support them definitely it's a great charity uh we'd love to shout them out and big props to, to jake mackey over there who uh who heads up the autistica player side of uh, the autistica charity uh so yeah great to see them they're doing fantastic things they get a lot of support across the games industry and as sam said yeah make sure you uh you head over check out some of the streams that have gone on over the weekend and, and if you can donate that would uh that would be fantastic it's all very much appreciated and, and goes to a very good cause um so that's our show. Um, not as long as we normally go, uh, but we're, we're done for the week. Dan, you're about to go off uh, for a few days off. I'd like to say well well earned. You're my boss, so I better say very well earned. Very much deserved a uh, few days off. I uh, just want to thank everyone for joining us. Team, yeah. I'm leaving him it, yeah, with I everything to, to hand over. I look, look forward to the handover notes. Um, and hopefully I'm still alive on Tuesday when you uh, come back, if I manage to uh, to get through everything um but no thank you everyone for joining us uh big thank you to everyone in the chat massive thank you to astrid who joined us for the discussion as i said if you missed that check out our youtube channel uh later this evening or tomorrow we'll get that interview up uh because loads and loads of great insights uh about uh the world of games communities and we'll be back next week at 4 p.m we're here every thursday at 4 p.m without fail um internet issues aside we we will always endeavor to be here thank you for joining us have a wonderful evening and we'll see you again soon bye bye